Whatever you do, you do it with intention. Episode 154. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and this week we have strategic partner and coach Britta Sigelkow of Think Build and architect James Hampton, founding director of New Makers Bureau. Britta is an accredited professional coach and consultant and an experienced architect in the built environment whose own career has taken her around the world, including working in places such as Australia, Germany, and the UK. In 2018, she founded Think Build, a coaching and consulting consulting practice created to give architects and designers the time and space to see their practice holistically. James has worked for a number of leading architectural practices, including Will Orsop and Studio Egret West, where he led the Park Hill Project, Europe's largest listed building, winning the Architects Journal Retrofit Award and reaching the RABA Sterling Prize shortlist. James co-founded a combined architecture and landscape practice, Periscope, in 2015, prior to founding New Makers Bureau in 2020. He is lectured both in the UK and internationally and is currently teaching at the Bartlers Master's School. He's also recently appeared on the BBC's Panorama programme, sharing his views about how to save the high street. In this episode, we take this opportunity of having both a practice owner and their consultant explore the work that they've been doing together in working on the business. We specifically look at the vision framework, what happens when you don't have one in place, how to go about defining and discovering that vision, and how having that as your foundation really serves as your guide in designing a practice that's authentic to you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Britta Sigalo and James Hampton. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, a leading business consultancy for architects and design professionals. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, Please follow the link in the information. James, Britta, welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. How are you both? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. And thank you for having us. My pleasure. No, great to have you both. Um, So Britta, you are a a business consultant, a business coach, a strategic thinking partner. You work a lot with architects and businesses in the AC industry and James you are an an architect and you're the founder of New Makers Bureau and you guys have been working together recently over the last yeah well more more than recently really actually probably uh, 18 months I think a year and a half excellent yeah yes yeah good so I I was quite interested in this having both of you on because it's nice to be able to speak to a consultant and their client and actually kind of use this as an opportunity to go deep into some of the work that you've, that you've been doing with each other. Um, and I think just to start, if, if, if Britta, perhaps you could explain to us in your own words, what is it that you do with architects? How would you describe, how would you describe yourself or how do you help your clients typically? I, I think the best way to describe is literally what I always use as a description as well. I see myself more as a strategic thinking partner. So I, it's really about um, facilitating the, the time mm-hmm. and place for architects and uh, specifically practice owners to take time out and to work through issues around their business in terms of working on their business. And that's yeah. a sort of compared to having the time working in your business. So it's really about, and, and I'm the one who kind of facilitates this this thinking and uh, it comes in different shapes and forms so I think with uh, it's quite interesting also with James because I think we sort of went for a whole process so in the beginning which we can talk about more and we were going to probably talk about later but but it's more I kind of um, offered more of a framework so we, mm-hmm. we really had a kind of process in terms of this thinking and then, and I think nowadays, I think we're more around, it's more bespoke in a way that um, James brings his questions to two hour sessions. And then uh, I, in a way, kind of facilitate the space ah. for him to, to think, it, think it through. So it's, 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 out, it's, it's always this sort of thinking. It sounds quite 
might sound quite vague, but I think it's it's this <laughs> critical part because it's so, especially when you smaller practices, you so in doing the work. Yes. And just doing your project work that you do hardly ever sort of take the time out to look up on actually what am I doing with my business and how do I can how can I move that, it forward? That's that's very interesting. You know, many um, design professionals when they set up their own business are deeply in the business mm. as opposed to working on the business. What when you say working on the business, what does that what kind of things does that include typically? I think it's um, again. I think I look at it. I think. Anything in a, in a way around um, leadership. So I always, I, I sort of feel quite strongly about leadership because for me, everything kind of begins and ends with leadership. So it says something around business leadership, and this is around um, the business vision. This is about mm -hmm. how do I design and structure my business, but it's also around leadership, it's around people leadership. So um, as a practice leader, how do I communicate and how do I work with my practice team or as a project uh, team leader? And, uh, and I think it's also around uh, personal leadership uh, in a way there's issues around time management and productivity. So, and I think all these things are things like in a way working on your business and on your career. And it's not about like sort of producing, producing the work. So. Got it. Great, great. And and James, you're the founder of New Break Makers Bureau. Um, wh when did you set up the business? It coincided with the pandemic, pretty much almost you know to the week. So it was kind of March, and so um, you were just, we were waiting you, for a suitable <laughs> pandemic to hit. Just before. waiting for the perfect economic circumstances to start, to start a business, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just you know it just happened that way. Uh, actually, that was quite good in a way because I found Britta um, quite early on. I think it was probably even, you know, I started sort of realising that I, I needed some some assistance or, or wanted, I think, actually, not just needed, but wanted some assistance. I found Britta um, and I think we had an initial chat and um, it was really good, actually. Straight away, I think we had good good sort of personal connection, good sort of, um, uh, you know, conversations and things about business. And then, um, yeah, I think the first few months, you know, it was fairly slow. And actually the pandemic gave us time, gave me time to really think about the way I wanted the business to work and the, and the values particularly. Mm. Um, I'd had a previous business and, you know, I hadn't done that. And I was kind of very aware that um, of, of what issues that had created, actually. Um, so this time, you know, I was really focused, really wanted to make sure the values were kind of core to the, to the proposition, really. Um, and it's also, I guess, it's a bit of a sense of, you know, at a stage in my life, I didn't want to compromise anymore. And those yeah. values, you know, they're not just business values, they're kind of personal values to some extent as well. Um, and I wanted to make sure, you know, this business was was a, a real success. So called Britta, you know. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I noticed that previously you worked for um, Will Allsop and Igre West. That's right. Yeah. 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 So I worked for Will Allsop for about three years. Um, which was fantastic. It was just as as um, that practice grew. So, you know, when I joined, I think there were about 50 people and they grew to about 150 mm -hmm. in those three years and you know, kind of amazing new projects and competitions being won kind of every week. And it was like such a great place to be, especially kind of early on in my career. Um, and then Agray West with Christoph and David, I kind of started, I was pretty much in the basement with Christoph and David when they started, you know. So I'd actually seen, in a way, I'd seen um, the genesis of a, of, a, of a business, a very, very successful business. Um, and I was with them for 10 years and sort of grew with the business. And, you know, it was brilliant, actually, to see that. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so you, would, you, would have, you would have got a, a, a number of good insights from watching those, both of those businesses grow. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I wasn't as close to it. Obviously, it wasn't, it wasn't my business. So some yeah. things that you kind of are hidden from you. Um, and actually, some of the stuff, I guess, you know, uh, that when Britta and I started going through it, I was like, you know, why, why didn't I think of this before? You know, it's so brilliant. <laughs> it's so, it's so, it's so useful. And, um, you know, I saw, and, and there's a huge kind of change in the way that I, I think personally, I, I kind of work as well. I found, I find myself being much more, um, more organized actually, 
which is really good. Better, better <laughs> with my time, but I actually just, I'm a bit more sophisticated in the way I think about what I'm doing, you know, and there's right. less of this kind of like being drawn into the work. I think as architects, we're so passionate about what we do. Yes. You know, if I had the time, I would just make models all day. You know, <laughs> I'd, I'd draw, I'd make models, I'd spin around things in the computer. That's all the fun stuff, right? But then I wouldn't be doing the business. You know, I wouldn't be thinking about, about the business. And I think that's what Britt has really helped me with. Because this is a business. It's not just, it's not just having fun, you know, making wonderful buildings. It's, it's a business. Brilliant. Great. So the, the thing we were going to chat about today, the, the specific piece of work that we wanted to look at was this idea of the vision framework. So I'll open, I'll open it out to, to both of you. What is, what is a vision framework? Shall I start with the theory? <laughs> so so <laughs> the vision framework I'm using is based on, there's a book from the 90s, which is called Built to Last and Habits of Visionary Companies. And that's Jim Collins and Jerry Porras. And um, I think anyone who's sort of more familiar with business in general, kind of, I think is probably very familiar with uh, Jim Collins as well. And his business vision, um, he uses, so that I use that framework and involves um, gaining clarity and identifying your core values. This is like really what's important to you, what you stand for as a practice. Then there's a core purpose. And this is sort of the, your why, why do you do what you're doing apart from making money? And that is really sort of the discovery part. Mm. And then there is a sort of creative part, which is about, in a way, then creating your vision in terms of really looking long term, at least 10 years, 20 years ahead and say, well, what is it actually what I really want to create here in terms of my business? So mm. what is it what I really want to achieve? And I think, and then as part of that, there's this the, the big carry audacious goal, and I'm sure we're probably going to talk about more in detail, but that's a really sort of setting yourself this really stretch goal, really compelling, inspiring stretch goal, but which is still tangible. And around that, there's a sort of envisioned um, future, what's it called, but it's like in a way painting, painting a picture. And that together in a way is then your, your vision. And um what I really liked about it is like what I always find fascinate, slightly fascinating working with architects or like being an architect myself, obviously having worked for, for various practices is that um, very few architects really look at when they look at their business or practice, they don't look at it in a creative way. They don't, they, it's always be like, oh, I want to do my design work. Oh, and then there's a sort of business side of things, but I think there's something really exciting about it. And then I think that's what I really, uh, and I think this is why we thought uh, James and I, we, we talk about because he literally had the opportunity to start to do this process starting from scratch, which is obviously makes it in a way also easier, but it, it's literally, there's also some, something really um, exciting about it to, to sit down and say, well, I'm going to design my mm. practice now. And, and it's the same process as what you would use um, any artist in any way use on a daily basis. This is what you do when you create um, fabulous buildings. You always start with a really strong, exciting vision and, and the sketch and this concept. And the stronger that is, the easier it is then to literally build it and implement it. And I think what a lot of architects, what they do, what they never would do in the building pushes is like, oh, well, client comes along, I would like to have an extension. So, oh, yeah, well, let's go to site. We start digging. And then we see what happens. <laughs> that, that you will never, never, you would never do it on a project. But so many architects, this is literally how they start practices. They get some work, let's get going. And then, mm -hmm. and then we see what happens. And I think, so, so this is why I really um, <clears throat> like this framework because it gives architects the space to really sit mm. down and think what is it what do we want to really kind of um create here with our practice and, and make it enjoyable so. mm. that, I think that's that, sorry that's really so that, that's really interesting you know the kind of just going on site and just starting to yeah. build something what, what are some of the problems that a practice faces without this kind of framework in place well, I is think it, it, leads, it leads to you being kind of kind of rudderless, actually. Like, how do you make mm. a decision about what sort of project you're going to take on? How do you make 
you know, how do you make a decision about whether you should say yes or no to a client, apart from just money? Um, and how, and how, do you, how do you make a decision about who you're going to hire? What sort of, you know, it, it's, it's kind of everything in a way. It's like a, <clears throat> a framework to how, how your business is going to grow. And it really helps you to make decisions. And I think that's what's so important about it is it's incredibly practical. You know this process. It's not just uh, it's not just a bit of fun kind of thing. And I think you know, Britta spoke about being really creative, and that's really important. And it's very creative and very enjoyable, which is brilliant. And actually, that sort of surprised me. Actually, not the enjoyable bit, but the creative bit. That it, I, I really enjoyed the creative side of of you know draw, drawing, sketching out this this vision of this business, and then and then um, kind of imagining it. And it was almost, you know, parts of kind of creative writing in there where we wrote, I wrote kind of piece about where I saw myself in 10 years' time, 20 years' time, whatever. Um, what's the kind of, you know, the dream scenario kind of thing. Um, and even going and even working through all the values, you know, I kind of wrote these little sort of um, little poems almost for each of the business mm. values as well. Um, and it was, yeah, it felt very, very creative and very enjoyable and it felt very authentic. I think that's also very important, but incredibly authentic. Um, and that and that gives you the, you know, the direction, it gives the business direction and it helps all of those key decisions that you make. You can always go back. And even if you change them, you know, even if you change the value, you change the purpose, which, you know, I haven't, but um, you might decide to do, you still have that, that direction. I think that's what's so, so valuable. Brilliant. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, uh, and uh, yeah, I think you do, I think what it does, I think everything you do moving forward, you do it with intention, because I think that's what, uh, as James just said, even if you change something, you then do it intentionally, you not just go along. And we sometimes talk about this, um, because this is what happens. I mean, it's not, it's, it doesn't mean, I think that's the other one, I think there's this disclaimer here now, even if you have a vision... <laughs> It doesn't mean it's easy to build mm -hmm. your business, but it's the same again if you put it into your architects or project context. Even the, the mo mo most exciting projects, if you take a, I don't know, Zara, Deed, or the Shard, or whatever, it's not like that, that it's then easy. To, to build it, you, you need to do then your kind of work to kind of come up with solutions and the strategy. And I think that's what um, James already alluded to early on as well, because it is in a way then kind of working backwards and, 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 and getting clarity. But it is um, definitely, I think, the sort of clarity and focus and, and, mm. and a real clear um, direction of travel. So, mm. so what are the component parts of, a, of this vision framework? Do you want to break it down so that, and then explain a little bit about what each part is and how, you know, what does the exercise look like for you know, working with mm -hmm. each other to actually get those things into place. Yeah. So, uh, I, yeah. Do you want do you to want, go? go well, to I thought, I'd, you know, before this podcast, I had a little look through all the <laughs> things we did together. I thought it was really interesting because it kind of built up, you know, kind of layers. Um, start and, and it started from almost, um, I think there was a kind of word grid thing and you had to kind of look at which words you felt more, more kind of close close to. For example, you know, so, so this is like establishing right the core values. Yeah, exactly. Right. right, right at the beginning, there was a kind of there was a kind of bit of an audit, a sort of almost a skills audit as well that I did. Um, there are a few few things like that, and it kind of built up in these layers, and that and that got to the values I think first. But what I was surprised when I look back actually, the work we did right at the beginning, we were talking about the core purpose as well. So there was sort of values and core purpose was almost the sort of foundation of it mm. growing up over time. And then and then the sort of the more long-term goals probably came about halfway through, I think, you know, the, the, the big, hairy, audacious goal kind of thing. And the sort of visioning piece came towards the end of the process, probably six to eight weeks in kind of thing, a couple of months in. Um, and, then, and then towards the end, I think we kind of wrapped it all up. You know, but they again okay, they're the core bits, aren't they? There's the, yeah. the purpose, the values, the big hairy audacious goal, and then this kind of vision statement as well. I think they're the core. Have I got it right, Britta? Is that sort of I think I think it's yes. I think what you um I think what you describe because I'm off I've got on if you went on my website you would see there's something which I call create, which is like a sort of visioning program and that also there's the, the the initial part is really working with 
practice owner sort of more looking at their personal values and personal mm -hmm. strengths because I think <clears throat> and also about I think which is very because especially smaller practice very important to get clarity around your personal vision and, and lifestyle and because all that will feed into then when you look at your practice and how do I want to design it and and then the and then there's a sort of clear section which is about the um, business vision and that is when we then start looking again at the core values for your practice, which often, especially when it's a small practice, are very much um, kind of interlinked with, with the personal values of a practice owner. And, uh, and then it's the, 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 the purpose, your why. And this is, uh, as James said, I mean, so I love it that he said it, it is literally <laughs> foundation. <laughs> that is the foundation yeah. from what everything else starts because everything then once you've got the clarity around and that is I always call like it's your it's a soul searching it's this mm. sort of discovery and I found sometimes clients who go through this if they didn't do anything else then just get clarity around their value that's that's I always find like that's the one when it really kind of clicks and they and then from that day on when they have the clarity they already report back that things are differently they kind of communicate different with with clients they they kind of get more clarity around projects but as i said if you go for the full one that's like then you look at your purpose and then the and then it's really about uh we start then looking which i think which you need to do you need to do look at the long term and that's the b hack and yeah, sort of the envisioned future Fantastic. Well, would you better share your um your core values james yes yeah i mean we had um there were lots, I think, to start with. I remember I sort of pinned them all up around my house, kind of everywhere. <clears throat> like, yeah, these these values everywhere. And and Bridge was like, well, you can't have you know, 15 or whatever it was, or 14 values. So we got it down to six. Um, right. And so the, the, the first one, I think it is, that this, there is kind of a hierarchy to them. The first one was this idea of treading lightly on the earth, so an environmental value. Right. Um, which, again, is a personal value. Um but for the practice, it means particularly, you know, I have a real um, passion, I guess, about embodied carbon, making low embodied carbon um, buildings. I think it's like the last sort of uh, real challenge, actually, in, yeah. in, 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 in architecture in terms of environmental stuff. So that's something that, you know, that's kind of top, this idea of treading lightly. Um, the next one is about nurturing the imagination. So, you know, it's, it's, it's both about people looking after people and making sure the environment is right for nurturing imagination, but also for, for clients and just the way we, we think, um, being imaginative. Uh, then there's one about making. Obviously, it's in the, it's in the name of the practice, but um, this sort of idea of the joy of making and, and architects really connecting back to making, so actually doing things physically hands-on, you know. And we, we, we try to make examples at one-to-one -one or one-to-two scale and we sort of tried to make things as much as possible and you know i've got this sort of uh vision of, of of the practice space being this kind of crazy mad scientist kind of workshop as well as a as well as the kind of architect's office but there's kind of making you know bits of stuff everywhere um, yeah. being made uh there's one about sort of attention to detail sweat the small stuff so so you know just really making sure that you're focusing on both the, the physical details of the building but also the, the details of the practice and the, and the and the clients what they want and the rest um, and then last two, because there are quite a few, um, don't compromise, sort of number five, which is just, you know, I don't want to have a practice where in 10 years time, I'm sort of, why am I doing this project? Mm. You know, why am I working with this client? Why am I? Yeah. What's the point? <laughs> Maybe I've got some money, but actually it's not, it's not doing what I want to do. So I think that that one almost is just for me that value because it's like, you know, and Britta can police it for me, but. It's for me to it's for me to check myself and say, don't do it. You know, you might need the money right now, but actually, it's not. There's no point, kind of thing. Um, and then the last one is this idea of a workshop. So working, working collaboratively and working in a kind of space which isn't just uh, an office heads down, but there's also making and there's things happening all the time. So working in a workshop kind of environment. Brilliant, brilliant. And and so how do you, now you have those values in, in place, how do you kind of keep them alive, if you like? Um, I mean, I actually look at them all the time, you know. Right. I, probably, I probably look at them once or twice a week. Um, I sort of scroll through my, my business plan and my, and my stuff. Um, but also there are decisions to be made. Um, you know, some of it's actually 
sort of in, in the in the subconscious a little bit, there's decisions to be made. I'd be like, oh, I can't choose that project because it doesn't fit in with the values. And actually there's this client, should I do that project? The client really wants to, but actually I sort of know, you know, I know that it's not, it doesn't fit in with the values. So I'm not going to do it. Um, and I think, you know, previously, and I think all architects, myself included, you know, do this is you just get a bit swept away by a project or a potential client or whatever. And you're like, you see the best possible thing in it. You know, you're, we're optimists in a way. So you see that client and you see that project. And you're like, oh, I know it's not quite right, but if I just made it, you know, if I could bend it to my will, I could do it. And it'd be amazing kind of thing. If I was Zaha Hadid or, you know, <laughs> um, but actually, when I reflect on that and you know it doesn't feel quite right and you think about your values, then you're like, ah, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm not going to. And so it helps you to, I think it just really clarifies the decision making mm. on all these sorts of things. Um, and, you know, when we have new people who start in the office, we, I, I tell them, you know, I tell them these are the values. We are a values based business and these are the values. Um, and there's, and, and, and it really helps actually. I've, I've seen, you know, um, colleagues really kind of warm to that and it gives them sort of clarity as well mm. i think and it sort of gives them the um um the ammunition if you like to sort of to to, to know how to make decisions and to be slightly autonomous as well um, is, is it something yeah. that you share with your clients as well no not really um it, i mean it comes through like you know the the, the environmental one for instance is in our in, is in our fee proposals it says yeah. we make we make low carbon buildings and if if you don't want that, then don't come to us kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it, you know, it is there, but it's not, it's not kind of explicit. Got um, it. But maybe it should be, you know, maybe it should be more explicit. But it becomes um, a framework through, through which you're making decisions about which clients you're going to yes, be working with anyway. Yes, in the first exactly. Place. Exactly. Yeah. So, so some of them, you know, in, in a way, um, I know that those clients share the values um, because otherwise we wouldn't be working mm-hmm. together kind of thing. Or, I, or, you know, I hunt for the clients who have got those values as well and try and try and reel them in. Yeah, and I think there's there's a sort of critical point here, and I think that um, is that w- with values, I think it's really critical so that they're useful, that they are authentic, and that you actually live them. And I always say it's not necessarily this kind of wordsmith world let's just how how make them sound amazing and put them on the website and then off we go it's really like that the practice lives it and that's sort of that becomes the culture and i think that's what james is saying so i think and that will attract the right clients that will attract the right people who want to work and join join the team so it's Mm. it's really um in a way living living your values instead of like as i said promoting them out there and saying well this is what we stand for but right. i think eventually as you said in, in terms of your work and and how you present yourself they how, will become apparent in any case how, how do how do you guide people to come up with an authentic set of values as opposed to um you know the kind of corporate values that we think we should have in a business i think it's it's through um critical questioning like in a way what would and, and in a way kind of offering some scenarios <laughs> would you if this was happen would you still mm. stick to it and i think one key is always would you walk away from a certain project would mm. would you walk away from even if it becomes financially a disadvantage how my how cool is this how is it in terms of and i think sometimes with practices who are already established and when it's about i don't know teamwork or collaboration to to make them look at like how how do they run their practice at the moment is this really core how you run is this really all around collaboration or is it maybe not as core (laughs) as you might like to to think so i think it's really um in a way questioning yourself and and look looking at yourself how how core is it and how how much do you sort of um what, what would you do to really kind of live live by it and what would you say well anyway i just yeah it sounds great or it's sort of more aspirational but we're not um kind of really completely committed to it Mm, and i think that's the the benefit of kind of you know we started early in the process and then it was kind of 
uh, interrogated as we went through. So sort of each each couple of weeks, there were these questions. It's like, do you really, is it really important? Would you actually <laughs> say no to a project? If, you know, and um, I think that's, that's really good because it does feel now like they are, they are um, right, you know, they are authentic. Um, and there were a few that were just a bit like, I thought they sounded like things I should be doing, yes. you know, rather yeah. than actually ones I really wanted to do. Because that's interesting. That's that's often, you know, sometimes when we talk about um, core values, we think of the, the, you know, the kind of corporate core values. You might have all worked in a big office at some point or in a, in a different industry, not architects, or always <laughs> value-driven people. Right? <laughs> but I, I often walk around the city sometimes and I see um, core values printed on bits of A4 paper mm. in like Comic Sans font. And you're like, I wonder if, <laughs> if that company really is a place of enthusiasm and passion. <laughs> yeah. And, and and yeah and so and so making it real and authentic i mean that's like the most important aspect of it really so it's, it's yes i i think there's some and i think that's again because um in james case because he's i think which was brilliant because he was in this great position to literally start from scratch so i think there was this um question around what will it look like in terms of implementation in a way already kind of again, painting this picture of like, what will your practice look like based on these values, mm. which is again, um, a great place to, to start. And which I think now that he grows his practice, I think will um, be very helpful. And I think this is why we'll feel very authentic. When you sort of have a practice already running for a while, then yeah, then you need to dig even a bit deeper and to really mm. see what are actually our core values. So I think there's something, for example, one thing is around, um, I think all architects love to say they're creative and design driven and, and creative, but then um, sometimes it's about digging a bit deeper. Is it maybe here more about um, efficiency or productivity and being target oriented, which is, again, it's not a bad thing, but it's just like to embrace it. So this is how we work. We, don't, we won't spend like lots of time and different ways of looking at exploring this design idea. We will come up with a designer, but then it's more about executing it. And so that's, that's our way. And I think that's fine, but I think it's being authentic and not pretending to be this um, overly creative <laughs> design, but then you need, mm. to, you, you need to live it and you need to, to kind of um, give your team the, the, the opportunities to be as creative as you like to say mm. and, that, as a practice. Mm. and there's that thing when you start a practice and you see all these other wonderful practices around you like, i want to be like that you know i want to be like those guys um but you can't be like those guys you've got to you've got to be yourself you know you've got to mm. do your own do your own practice and i think that's that's what it allows you to do is to actually create the framework to, to do something individual and specific that's that's true you know true to to what mm -hmm. you want to do you know and, and britta is there a specific structure for a core value like how it's expressed that you recommend like is it is it just purely one word or is it like a oh a right okay no, i like that is yes it, is it, is it a sentence and then behaviors or how, how do you recommend i um in that i'm very creative and flexible <laughs> I leave no I, I really do I, I think and James might uh, remember that I always say it doesn't matter what it is it can be a word it can be a sentence it can be I don't know a few words combined with each other I think this I think goes back to what I said earlier on I think it's really what it really is about it's like what does it mean to mm -hmm. you so if you I don't know if your um, uh, core value is challenge, that people might interpret it differently. What's important is like, what does it mean for you as a practice? So I always, um, I think the, 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 the process which is uh, involved is like to describe it. So I think that's really, so, so for me, it's like whatever it is, and then it's more the internal for yourself and maybe for the practice to describe what does it actually mean 
challenge. So does it mean we look for um, unique challenges in, in every work we're doing? Is it about um, challenges that we're creating a sort of workplace where everyone has opportunity to, to get challenged and, and, and sort of it's nurturing personal and professional development? So it's really about... Um, you can call it whatever you want to. You can use whatever. It's what I'm sort of more, my role is to, I think that's again like a, <laughs> what James called like interrogating, but it's more about like, <laughs> do you understand? I mean, what does it mean for you? And, and, is, and whatever it means for you, is that really true and authentic? But um, yeah, but, but I've seen with, with clients, they um, have all, sometimes they have sentences, they might sometimes just have just one kind of expression so is there a, a recommended amount that you should have like is there too <laughs> yes, many I, well, you have too many core values um, or not no enough? not too, too not too, as as few as possible so because i think that i think the key is the word core isn't it if it was right. just about values it's the core values and and um so if we're going back to that framework initial framework that's sort of three to six um core values that's what i try to working with clients try to get to but again i mean um th this is all very um individual so if someone right. comes up with seven core values and they all authentic it's not like oh well you <laughs> you didn't pass your business <laughs> <laughs> then it's seven it's but but what it is i think what uh, jane was again saying if you end up with having 10 I think sometimes I think it's more about looking at them and saying, well, some of them often they overlap. They, they kind of mean in a way the same things just express slightly differently. So I think it's really, so core is really that they're very distinct because then they help you. If you have like five values, they all more or less meaning the same. That is not necessarily kind of really helpful. So yes, right. but going back to it, three, three to six is the magic number, but it's Great. written in stone. So, so James, you, you had to do a bit of editing then. <laughs> I, I had to do quite a lot of editing, yeah. And I think <laughs> even in the end, Britta kind of gave me a bit of a get out of jail free where I could have some design values as well as some core values. So we've got a few design values as well, which I don't really look at, to be honest. But the, <clears throat> the, the core values, um, yeah, I think they're about 14 to start with. But they were, they were overlapping. They were similar. Some of them I didn't really... You know, it'd be quite interesting actually to go and find those, <coughs> excuse me, find those old ones mm. and um, see what they said. But um, I think that I think there's a lot of overlap. There's a there's a bit of waffle, you know, and there's a bit of sort of stuff I thought I should be doing, but actually didn't really care about. You know, that's interesting as well that you mentioned the difference between core values and say design values. Are the what what's the relationship there? Are are the core values design values, or the design values totally separate, or yeah, I mean, or, I they, think, or are they one and the same? Well, there's a bit of both, really. There's a bit of overlap. I think um, the core values are, are, are everything. They're the business, they're everything. And they should filter into the design, but some obviously are more sort of design focused than others. Um, and, and, you know, so, you know, the environmental one, for example, is quite obvious. The practice is focused on that, but it also has a very important design thing. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe other ones are not so much. I'm actually thinking mine. They are, they are all design values, actually. But, you know, I think so, to, to different extents, really. Um, some are more about maybe client relationships or sort of how you behave and not just about design, but some are very much focused about on, on design. It, it, Britta, is that something that you see a lot with architects, that you, that you sometimes need to have a, a separate set of design values or manifestos or do the design principles actually tend to make quite good business principles as well it, it's it's interesting because i do um because sometimes when the when the clients start with the process and they're quite a lot it is i say sometimes because you, you can sometimes when they talk about they talk more about design and then they talk more about how they work and then i say well if it helps you can as i said look at them in two different categories but often once you've done this kind of soul searching work, often you find they they end yeah. up with with one set. So it's it's um, I don't know. For example, I've got some which is about sort of 
joy and joy for working and that often then also reflects in a way in in the designs but it's also in, in terms of the process of working and the experience for the clients and and so it's it's um at the end of the day so i do always offer that when i see maybe it just helps to get clarity but at the end of the day um they often end up being one set because they just and then they because they, they so i think often core yeah, they often then expressed in in the in the, in the design design as well. So it's like uh, innovation is often mm-hmm. how you work, and and maybe kind of doing going the extra mile in terms of like maybe new technologies. But that kind of eventually also reflects in your um, in your design. So it's it's um, yeah. To to going back to, I think I, I do offer <laughs> the option. What did you call it? The the J <laughs> get J out of yeah, yeah, but yeah. they they often end up um, being being one set of values. It's so I didn't have to throw them away. You know, you put all this effort into them. So yes. I, don't throw, I don't have to throw them away now. <laughs> yes, exactly. excellent. So 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 once the company has established uh, this this kind of set of core values, these sort of guiding principles for for life and design, let's say. <laughs> Then what? Then what's the what's the next part of the vision framework that unfolds? And is it as linear as this? Is it? Um, I I mean the, 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 so there's obviously there's also this the the, the core purpose, but I find right. oh, again um, in an ideal world you have your core values, your core purpose, and then you start with your B hack. The core purpose is really about um, again. I see more, it's a sort of this sort of a bit more like soul searching. What is really, what, mm-hmm. what is it really about our work? What's, what's really important, important to me. And for some people, it's more about um, uh, the, maybe the process, how they're working with, with um, clients, more kind of helping for others, maybe the purpose is around like the impact they might have um, on, on the environment, but that's, so, but often, it's the sort of there's often a bit of like an overlap with, with the core values. So I always find once the clarity around the core values, yep. that, that is really in terms of foundation work of your vision. That's the key, key word, a key one. And and then with the core purpose, if if you have it and you, I mean, if you have it, if you if you're able to um, articulate it in a way, that's fine. If you just done the work to discuss a bit further, but you might not have come up with this amazing one-liner, which I think that's that's fine as well because it's very much um, linked to your core values. But right. I do find because um, I had to look at it, uh, James, and I think you had uh, you had a, I liked your. I mean, I'm not a li- and there's nothing about liking, but I think it's a brilliant <laughs> um, core purpose in a way that it reflects. What you were talking about your core um, values. Shall I say it? Yeah, go on. Yeah. To make a better world in a joyful way, and I think that's that's in a way encapsulated everything. Um, what uh, James kind of identified as um, values, and the idea, I mean, with the core purpose is really about um, for practice when you move forward. To, and I think it's probably often with corporations. And mm-hmm. So to 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 decide is this really aligned with our core purpose and what what can we what can we do? But um, again, taking it into my my work, there there is a framework. But for me, as part of this, is the the, the core values is really the the key in terms of the discovery process. And then the next one is like this is your soul searches, and then it's really about looking looking for, forward and and getting creative and i think that's sometimes where i can see that um clients slightly struggle there's a bit of this anxiety because it is it, it is literally it's all up to you what mm. kind of goal do i set myself there's no one else in, this is all about you like where do i want to where mm. do i want to get to and and um, how ambitious am i going to be and uh, but that's that's the one that's the bit what we talked about in terms of um giving you that um, direction of travel and the focus and and you need and you do need you do need that as well to to move move forward so so the, the purpose is like an overarching statement if you like for the direction yes. of the company 
Yes. So it's yes, it's 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 in a way encapsulating. I mean, I had one um, one of my clients. They they just they had like to make great buildings happen, and for him, for them, it was really important that the keyword was happen to make right. it happen because they were very much um, enjoyed, and their focus was really about like sort of the planning application and, and still kind of and, and getting and, and, and ensuring that as part of the process you they didn't compromise didn't compromise in terms of so so it's 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 but yes so in a way it's it's kind of encapsulating what your um practice in general kind of stands for great uh, james for you what what was the what, what's been the benefit of the purpose statement if you like or the purpose I think, as Brett says, it's almost, I think, as the practice grows, it's something that's that sort of um, long-term, overarching kind of direction. Mm. I mean, to, it's, it's funny because, you know, it's only a few words, but to me, it's like I, I read into it because each of the words were kind of quite specific. And I like make, you know, it's very much about making and this idea of a better world is about the, the goes back to the value of treading lightly on the earth and being very careful with the world's resources and, you know, the environmental values. Um, but I, so I think it's like, a, I think it's probably as the business grows, it's like a long term sort of that's where we're heading. Kind of everyone's going in this direction kind of thing. Um, and in a way, I sort of see it as a shorthand for the values. It's like it's right. like without, without going into each of those values, it kind of captures everything. Um, so it's like it's sort of it's, it's like one up it's one above the, the values, if you like, in the kind of hierarchy. Got it. Got it. Excellent. And so. So you've got the core values, you've got a, um, a kind of a, a purpose statement, which is like a, a North Star, if you like, or a sort of guiding mm-hmm. overarching direction or a long term vision, if you like. Then what? Then we move into creating the mission part of the of the framework. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, so, what, and what does that involve? So there was there's this this big, hairy, audacious goal. <laughs> which was that was real um it was, that took a quite a lot of interrogation from Britta <laughs> it took quite a lot of sort of really you know really do you really mean that because I think also you don't want to go too too big you know to start with and you're always a little bit you sort of a bit mm. shy a bit shy and then actually in the end it was like yeah I do want to do that I really do <laughs> so after a few weeks it was like yeah um, so there's, there's a sort of really, you know, really, um, I think you used the word stretch earlier, Britta. So mm. it's like, you're really stretching yourself. How far can I stretch myself? Can I, it's like, I can't, can I see myself getting there? It's like, oh, mm. I probably could just about kind of thing, you know, if I really, really push it. Um, so there's that, and then there's a kind of more, um, I don't know, there's, and there's sort of more sort of thoughtful, reflective piece, I guess, about the, the, the sort of long-term vision. Where do you actually see yourself in in 10 years time or 20 years time or whatever but if you you know really sit down and it's like i'm here it's 10 years fast forward into the future i'm looking back what have i what have i done have i achieved everything what is it that i'm that i'm achieving so how, how do you how do you even begin to sit down and decide what uh what a big hairy audacious goal might <laughs> be for the business? <laughs> It is. I, 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 when, do you, when, when do you know it's hairy or not? <laughs> exactly, I think yeah. when you get. I, I always find. I think hairy is like it becomes hairy when you feel slightly embarrassed bit, to bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> not sure whether I want to really share it, but I, I do find um, with that process again. Um, the, James described it. Fantastic. So, so you do have the very specific, the B hack. And if we're sticking to that um, Jim Collins framework, he's mm-hmm. got a really clear definition. It's about minimum 10 to 30 years. It's so audacious that you feel like you don't even have a chance to get there unless you're kind of fully committed. Ideally, you feel like 50s. And, it, and it's very, and the other one, I think it's a very tangible. So it's literally, you know, when you achieve it is kind of this kind of rallying cry for the whole practice or for yourself so that's that's one part and then the other part is like in a way describing what it looks like once you get there and I do find with clients um, it and I'm flexible on that and I can sort of sense some embrace they just love the concept of a b-hack and they go for it 
others a bit sort of hesitant, and then it works better to first start just describing what would you like to see. See your sets. You need to, I think that's one thing that every client needs, or everyone needs to do. You, you need to set yourself a time frame. So mm -hmm. you need to say, is it 10 years, 20 years time? So if we say 10 years time, what do you really want to see? So, and, and it might start with simple things. How, how big is the practice? Do you work locally? Do you, what kind of projects do you do? What, and, and it's just sort of slightly kind of pulling it out. And then you, I think you finally sort of get to what is the bit which really would make it really exciting. Mm -hmm. And then you can get it. Or you do it, as I said, you do it the other way around because I do have clients who just love it. <laughs> just, they, just, they just embrace it. This is brilliant. So, and, so, but, so so is, is the BHAG, is it something that's specifically about the business or is it something like a contribution to society or is it, or can it be both or? I suppose it could be anything. Can it, Britta? Anything, I mean, yeah, yeah uh, uh, ours was about the, the business. Um, and it was very excited. Should I tell you mine? Yeah. Oh, no, so, yeah this is your music. <laughs> now, is it's, very good BHAG be, when there's Now you're committed <laughs> to it. <laughs> Yeah, be yeah, thousands of people are going to hear it. <laughs> Come knocking on my door in ten years' time. So, um, actually, you haven't managed to do that. Um, so it was to become the UK's go-to architect for inspiring public buildings. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not that amazing. audacious, is it? I mean, there are a couple of others in there. I think we had something about winning the Sterling Prize was in there, you know, mm -hmm. just underneath and some other things. But there were, yeah, I remember Britta kind of having to tease it though, because it was quite sort of, I don't know. Yeah, just, I was reluctant to commit to it, or it's a bit too big, or whatever, you know. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to do. Um, and actually, and, even and, that, yeah, and and something like that becoming like the number one go to architect for public uh, for builders. How would you know when that's completed? For it's example? all the people who listen to this podcast are going to call in and tell <laughs> me. <laughs> um, I think it's just a personal thing, isn't it? It's just. Um, yeah, you know, you're like you're you're sitting there and you're drinking your whatever martini in the sunshine in ten years' time, and um, yeah, you're like, oh yeah, making lots of great public buildings. Very happy about that. Thanks very much. Thanks, Britta. And then yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, I think you have to, it's a it's a personal thing. I think you know because it doesn't say the scale of the buildings. It doesn't say exactly right. what they are, but kind of in you know, I think we had lots of questions. We had lots of conversations about it. Um, and sort of, you know, I know personally what it sort of means, what it means to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's, it's, I, I think it's this sort of real um, stretch because you always need to put it into context from the time when you set it, and you think, uh huh. <laughs> but, but it's, uh, I, I find with uh, the continued work with, with James, I think it's, it's the bit like that's the one, the B hack. Is the one yep. because it's so as I said it's 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 very clear for for James and for for, for the practice it's the one to always kind of to relate to so so when things happen and in terms of I don't know getting work or and sometimes as we describe it's kind of getting lost or going off mm. off street and sort of getting to the wild and is. It's the, mm. it's the bee hack which will get you back and say well mm. stop now you have to be a bit careful don't do too much of this kind of work or do whatever because the, the real key is this is where you want to get to and I think um, that yeah what's nice about a BHAG is like it, it's something very easy to 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 grab and hold on to instead of like mm. a sort of wider just a sort of painting a picture but it's like yes. this is it so so the key here is like public um, public buildings and and obviously being um being good at it and being the sort of number one so that is that's about quality that's about the type of work and then um and then obviously you still have to do the work which i think james early on alluded to mm. you need to come up with a strategy and you you need to sort of then work backwards and see yeah and i think that's what, almost more scary in a way because you, you work you, know, you have your sort of 10 year thing and then you work backwards, you know, like, oh, five years, so I need to be doing in this in five years, and then two years, oh, I need to, and then three months, like, oh, I better start doing this now, you know. And but yep. it does give you real kind of direction in a way. Like now, when I see the little tiny shoots of of these um things, these projects that might become these these future 
inspiring public buildings, whatever they are. So, you know, if yeah. we're doing a little extension for a school at the moment, for example, it's like, oh, I can see if I do this extension and then I can get a bigger thing and then a bigger thing and then I can do universities and, then, you know, and so it gives me a sort of, you can see the kind of path to it. Yes. You're, you're sort of slightly more focused on those things, you know. It gives you a bit more direction. You can see them and go, grab it, you know, grab that grab that project because it's in the it's on the path to the thing I want to do kind of thing. Yeah, and I, I think there's something around the bee hack, um, and I think it's what Jim Collins uh, originally also said. It's I think the beauty of a bee hack is not even like to achieve it. It's just like that it really stretches you and you accomplish. So just to pursuing it, you accomplish so much more along the way. So it's mm. it's really about um, getting you out of your comfort zone and just. Do, do more than you maybe um, wouldn't do if you didn't really know where you wanted to get to. And if there's, but if there's something really exciting and in a way you feel like if I really, really, really go for it, I can get there. I think that's, that's, I think that's what I love about the concept of um, a BHAG, that it just kind of pushes you to just to do more. And that's either how you structure your practice, as I said, how you go about business development, how you work. It's probably also about um, looking, uh, being conscious about the quality of work you do, really being really, really, really conscious. About it. It's like, hold on, if this is what I want to get to, I just can't do like nilly willy, like all kind of, oh, well, that, that, that's good enough. This is fine. That's, that's, you will never, never get there where you, if, if this was your particular um, goal. So I think that's what I really like about it it's exciting and it really stretches you to do probably more than mm. if you didn't have it and it's clear and so there's a very kind of clear compelling mm. vision for where the direction of the business is yes is saying it, it's kind of like you know we're we want to be number one in public buildings therefore we're not going to be we're not going to be sidetracked by this mm. airport project that's exactly. come, come, come yeah. along or yeah mm. or, offering the big bucks yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's focused or you might, or you might, yes. be, you know, is the, is the BHAG something that gets refreshed or can change over time? Say for example, mm. say for example, five years down the line, actually, you know what public buildings wasn't the right things. We do want to do infrastructure. Mm. Uh, mm. Is there, is there scope for that or Britta, do you suggest? Yes. Not, not me, doing the that guardian. Or... Of... <laughs> well, let me think. I, no, I do. I mean, I really, I mean, I think which, uh, I think I said before, I really look at this as a framework because I find right. that the whole thing and the whole concept because I, I, I think I just like it because it's about so searching and it's about creating. But I also always say there's no right or wrong. I mean, mm. who is there? Is it like the frame vision police says, oh, <laughs> hold on. I remember this is this will be James yes, in five yes. years' time <laughs> playing mm. this back. Mm. We remember. It's not. I mean, it's, it's about all I always, what I really feel passionate about, because I really see it does make a difference to um, architectural practices and to everyone involved uh, working for a practice is, what if whatever you do, you do it with intention. So if exactly, if you're saying, if in a five years time, you, you realize actually we, what, what we've actually really noticed is that we really enjoy this kind of work. I mean, who, who's there to say, well, but you said, like, you said it's not, <laughs> it's, it's about, but I think it's what you want to do is you would, as long as it's true, as, as long as it's true to yourself and to your, into your values, and you and you're excited about it. I mean, that's the that's and and uh, ideally, I think it's the the B hack. It's about exciting. That be excited about it, and it's about challenging because that's that's the two things. It's like that because then it's a great motivator, and 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 it's something uh, very motivating for everyone in the practice. So, mm. yes. So I I mean, I don't know what Jim Collins would say if he ever listens <laughs> to this podcast, but from, from my end, it will be fine to. <laughs> So yeah, and, you, sure, and if you did, you know, if you did change, you just you write a new one, wouldn't you? So you have a new sort of a new goal to to go for. Because I think that's what's so important is that, as you say, it's intentional mm. and it's uh, it's very very clear. It's very clear. Mm. It's quite simple, you know, and, and and that makes it kind of easy to, to digest somehow. And, and and is this something that the BHAG, like the whole office, knows about it that you in a yeah, conversation? Yeah, I mean, with them? 
Yeah, completely. I think also, you know, I was interviewing someone last week and I told I told them about it. I think it's it's quite good. Again, a bit like the values, it's good for people to know where where they're heading. Mm. And um and also, you know, some of the projects might not be that at the moment. I mean, they're not. We are not the UK's go-to architect for inspiring public buildings. Yeah. Yet, yet, you know, but um <laughs> just a few years. Um and I think it helps, you know, other people in the practice to understand. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not quite doing that yet, but we're doing this thing and there's a sort of route to it. And at least, you know, at least we've got, you know, we've got some projects that are doing that. They're not all doing it, but some of them are kind of thing. Um, rather than just being, you know, a bit sort of directionless. And I think it's hard if you're working in practice and you don't really know where the practice is heading. Mm. It doesn't give you a sense of, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just doing all this stuff. I'm just doing all these different projects. I don't have a real clue about what, what what are they about? What's this practice about? Where's it where's it going? Kind of thing. Yeah, so I mean, I definitely, I mean, that, I I think that's and that goes feeds back into in general. I mean, this my whole around kind of le- leadership uh, in your kind mm. of architecture practice. I think it's uh, communication is key, and I mean, it just wouldn't make any sense whatsoever have <laughs> practice owners co- coming up with all this and then not sharing it with your practice. I mean, it's, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing you want to kind of, and again, I think that's why I call it sort of rallying cry. You want to get everyone kind of motivated, excited, and, and, and um, then not talking about them. I mean, and that's, and that's sort of, that's mm. obviously the vision, but I think that's even with anything what related to your, your practice. I always, I mean, you, you, you want to, I mean, people, anyone in your team, practice team, they want to know, I mean, it's like, I remember, like, uh, I mean, in, in practices I worked where, uh, yeah, I mean, you just didn't know what was going on. And it just makes it, uh, I think it gives, um, it, if you share all this, it gives instant meaning to everyone's work. They just instantly know whatever they do, how does it fit into what, what we're doing? And the other great thing is like they, uh, I mean, that's the what, what we always call about kind of ambassadors for your practice, isn't it? I mean, it's mm-hmm. like if everyone's excited about it, they will go out and tell their friends about it and they do. And, and that's that's the other thing, isn't it? And that kind of, it, so it's, yeah, I think com- communication is absolute, uh, absolute key and it just, yeah. But I think it's, um, I think once you've, once you've done it, I think you, because it is about the practice. It's not about you as a practice owner. So I think the natural process is anyway, always to share it. Brilliant. Fantastic. I think that's the, the perfect place to conclude the conversation, mm-hmm. really inspiring stuff. And thank you so much for, for showing us the, the kind of the, the, the deep side, the insights of going through that process and how it's manifested in your, in your practice and in your work. So thank you very much, um, James and Britta. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. Thanks. And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.